Guys, Zach Majors, so uh, as I kind of announced that I'm gonna move this channel towards some backpacking stuff, something that I've always had an interest in doing, but just didn't have the time. It's very expensive to get into this hobby. This is an expensive little fun thing to get into. I did a, a super, super deep dive over the last five months or so, reviewing every aspect of, of gear that I possibly could think of. The beginning of that was really looking at things that were ultralight. That was the main focus of my search. And as I kind of went on, I realized that it's not about getting as ultralight as possible. It's more about what pieces of gear do you wanna go ultralight or lightweight class in so that you can have other items with you like a chair or whatever to add comfort to your trip. So longer miles, more comfort, that seems to be uh, what you really wanna look out for. So my evolution in, in my gear list, which I was counting by the ounces, changed and transformed. And I think I've got to a pretty good base uh, a weight, which I, I don't know what it is exactly yet. So I'll do, at some point I'll do a video of, of my base weight loadout, but I'm should be between eight and 10 pounds on my base weight right now, I think. This is a, a journey that I'm getting into. I'm not a backpacker, I'm not a through hiker. I haven't even put up a tent. I haven't been in a tent or pitch a tent for like 30 plus years. So this is, I'm almost getting into this really for the first time ever. Hopefully I made a, a selection that makes sense as a beginning hiker. And what I, I also wanted to make sure that the items that I chose were things that were not these step advancements towards getting the gear that I really absolutely wanted. I didn't want to be in a position that, you know, two years from now, I'm like, man, I, I should have started off with that pillow or, or whatever it is. So I think I did okay. I think I did right. You guys let me know. All right, so the first piece, the X-Mid Pro 2. So this is maybe not like a beginner's backpacker tent, but I went with it because of its weight, of course. Uh, which there are other tents in this weight class. But I also went with this because of its design. I think that unique designs are pretty cool. Sometimes that can work against you. I think this design actually will work with you. This was tremendously easy to pitch. I did the four stake and uh, two extra for the door. So six stakes total. And it was a piece of cake, like in two to five minutes, like it was done. So it's light, it's got a unique design. Um, those are the reasons that I went with this tent. This is the 2023 version. Some of the updates that Dan put on this tent, the amount of material that was over the magnets. So it may seem like you did get some, you know, updated magnets that are a little stronger, but it's just that lack of, I think, Dyneema that's over it. A little less material, so the magnets have a little more responsiveness. Changed the shock cord that was on the vestibule door to a static cord here to get the uh, tautness on the door stakes and then also added pockets. I'm really stoked to get this out there. Went with the groundhogs. So far they seem like they are pretty good. They're very light. I don't know yet what kind of different terrain I'm gonna run into. Bigger arsenal of stakes as far as like something for a very rocky hard ground or, or whatever. I get two more. Plus, if I need to do a storm pitch, if anything happens, uh, I want to have those extra stakes. So groundhogs is what I went with on the stakes. All right, now for my sleeping pad, I went with the Thermarest Neo Air. This is the Xtherm NXT. This is the new one that came out. The R value of this went up to, I think it's 7.3 or something like that. And it's also got a half an inch thicker. So... They did those two things while also making it a little lighter. I'm not sure how much this weighs. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go over all the weights of all this stuff. I'll do that at some other point. This is probably overkill for, for a beginner backpacker, but I did want to, if I'm gonna invest in a sleeping bag, I wanted to make sure that I got something so that if I ever did like find myself in the Canadian Rockies or whatever, like I'm set, this is it. This is, this is the sleeping pad, I'm done. Whoever like came up with a term but they, they sound like chip bags is totally correct. That's the sleeping pads. Pillows, I went with the Philo Elite Luxury. I wanted something, there was a couple of reasons I went with this. I wanted something a little bit longer and also the sleeping, I almost called it my sleep system at home. <laughs> the sheets and pillowcases I use at home are Jersey. And this has a, uh, a Jersey knit fabric on it, which I love. It's so soft, it's so comfortable. The one bad thing about this, it's not very tall. So as a side sleeper, having two of these would probably be best. And I know you're saying, well, just get the one that you, you actually need that gives you the height. Because another thing that I do when I'm sleeping is I, I put my arm, I don't know how many of you you've 
folks do this, this might be a weird thing, but I put my arm under my pillow. So my plan is to get two of these. I'll have my arm on top of the bottom one. I don't know, maybe a waste of pillows. I, I just wanna be comfortable. For filtration, I'm going with the Life Straw Peak Series. I, I know that I wanted to have two of something uh, when it comes to water filtration. I just, I don't wanna be stuck with, you know, whatever, I lose one or something gets clogged. I may switch one of these out for the Platypus Quick Draw because uh, I'm hearing that those have less of a tendency to clog up. I just wanna make sure I'm covered from all directions. So I'll probably take one of these and a Platypus Quick Draw. I'm not gonna be carrying a, a bladder bag or anything like that. Smart water bottles, one, one for dirty, one for clean. For my headlamp, I went with the Petzl Arctic Core. Arctic Core is such a weird name. I feel like it should just be Arctic Core or something like that. This is the 600 lumens. It's their hybrid model. So it's able to accept three AAA batteries or one of their recharge batteries that you can get separately. These ones came with the batteries inside. Wanted to have an extra battery just in case, whatever. I'm overdoing it as like a typical newbie backpacker. I'm getting way too much stuff. Pouch is supposed to serve as kind of a lantern and it works, it definitely works. As long as you're hanging your light a little outside of the pouch a little bit, not not out, but you're, you want your headband to be out, which is gonna serve as your, as your hook. And as long as the light is somewhere like around this area, it really illuminates this bag pretty bright. So happy with this so far. It's 3.1 ounces, so it's not light at all. Sporks, Sea to Summit Spork. These things are so freaking light, I don't know how they do that. I wanted to get something a little longer because from what I can see, it's hard to get into those bags and you don't want a bunch of stuff all over your hands. So I wanted something I can dig deep. There's a lot of different utensils out there, uh, but I went with the Sea to Summits. Uh, okay, for my cook system, I went with the Tokes. Shoot, I forgot the size of these already. 750 milliliter. From what I understand, come in a couple different versions. And they, I accidentally got this one from REI. I selected two of the same one and they they gave me a variant, which I didn't even know existed, but it does. It's got a cute little handle. It's not that much weight, so I'm gonna leave it on there. I, it's pretty cool. Good thing about the 750 milliliter is you can also fit all your gas and stove items pretty nicely in there. So I think this is, shoot, I forgot, the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. I think it's the Deluxe. Um, this thing's pretty chill. It's very easy to get going, even for a newbie. And that's it. Just open up those little arms, tilt them up, boom, you're ready to go. Um, this one does have the ignition built in, so it will be bringing a Bic lighter with me just in case that fails just a mini fired this up a couple times pretty stoked so far it works really well unfortunately well i shouldn't say unfortunately because it's for safety in the sequoias where you know again i'm planning my first trip you are required to have a bear vault in the area where i'm going so i'm going to be going to pear lake uh, which is where i want to camp and then there is a off trail hike that i want to do the next day going to moose lake so there are black bears around there. Um, I think every time I've gone to the Sequoias, several times, I see a bear every time. At least once, if not twice, I'll see a bear in the same trip. So there are tons of bears. They're mostly going down to, you know, Lodgepole and those areas. I went with the, uh, it's the BV-475, which is not the biggest one right under that. So for two people, this will get you a few days. For one person, you're good for a week. It's unfortunate how heavy this thing is. It's over two pounds, I think. Just having this around the house to like stand on when I need to reach something high. That's been uh, useful so far. Okay, so I don't know how much of the top of this is in frame, but this is the Kakwa 55. First one that came out, which is the 40. Dan came out with the 55. Um, I instantly just gravitated towards that. The initial one that I had on the list was the 40, but after seeing some more reviews with the 55. So far, this thing's been great. I've done some customization to it. So like get my sandals on the outside. I've got a fanny pack for some day hikes that I wanna do. I've got a couple bandanas. One here to protect the netting from the bottom of the shoes and, and any rocks or anything that's on the bottom of the sandals. But I wanted to have a few bandanas. One, because I'm gonna be around some lakes. So I wanna, 
you know, have something to quick dry. It's going to be warmer whenever I go into the sequoias to pair lake. It's going to be like in the 70s. So drying off is not going to be an issue. You don't need much more than a, than a bandana. Also to dry off condensation from the tent if that does happen. And then also I wanted uh, a bandana so that if I do have to pull water out of a stream that is a little more, you know, silty, I can just throw this over the bottle or, or whatever I'm using. Some of that silt from, from getting into the bottle. So bandanas is the way I'm going to go, at least initially. We'll see how that works out. Did want to take a chair for sure. This isn't much, you know, it's a pound. So if, if you're going with a lighter pack or, or you have a lighter piece of gear so that you can actually afford to take the weight penalty of you know, a comfort item. This thing's been out forever. This has been out for like four years and this it's like exactly the same. It's not like the most comfortable chair that you can possibly get, but I'm sure after an 11 mile, 20 mile hike, this chair is, is comfortable no matter what. For my tracking poles, what with the Black Diamond Pursuit Shock? I don't know if this is kind of a gimmicky tracking pole. The pole itself, you know, Black Diamond makes amazing poles. They're pretty light. They're lightweight enough for me. Um, I was going to go with the, my initial pick was like the Gossamer, I forget the, the names of it, but the, got the, the one Gossamer pole that everybody's getting that's going ultra light. That was on my list uh, to get for months. And then at the last, I think the day that I was going to buy poles, I switched over to these Pursuit Shocks. These seem to have just come out because I couldn't find any reviews. It's kind of significant with this one is you can kind of, I'll get it on this one. You can kind of see that this flexes a little bit, which is intended to take out some of those, you know, hard hitting moments on your shoulders, less fatigue on your joints and so on. I don't know how much that's actually gonna work on the trail. If that's just a gimmick for an extra 20 bucks or whatever it was, or if that's actually gonna work out. So far, I like the color scheme of these. Pretty cool. Have to have trekking poles for the tent, but I, I've never used trekking poles just for general hiking. And um, from what I understand, this is like a huge game changer as far as the fatigue of your muscles and your joints and stuff. So I'm excited to try trekking poles. If you don't want the Pursuit shocks, which have this shock mechanism built in, you can go with just the regular Black Diamond Pursuits which do not have that shock mechanism built in. There are plenty of reviews of this one. People seem to like it. Just as lightweight, a little cheaper. For boots, what are these? X Ultra 4. I'm forgetting the names of all this stuff because I've had it for a while as, as gear slowly shipped to me. Uh, so I'm not remembering all the technical terms for all this stuff, but this is the X Ultra 4, it's the mid version. I was kind of turned off by just the general design of most stuff. It's like just funky colors and these reds and oranges and just some weird stuff. So initially when I saw this design, I was super stoked about the color scheme of these and just how they looked, which I, I know is not why you choose a, a boot, but it just happened to be that, you know, Solomon had made these, comes in a cool color scheme and has a lot of cool features, really freaking light. But Solomon makes a great shoe, so can't go wrong with that. I know that there's not a debate, but there's definitely different tribes as far as do you go with a running shoe, do you go with a, a boot? It's just what works for you, what's comfortable for you. These happen to work fine for me. These things are pretty trippy, so you put them in the, the I mean, a lot of folks know about these, but it's new to me. Put these in the oven for like two minutes, three minutes or something like that put them inside your shoes, stand on them for a couple minutes, and then you have, you know, a cheaper customized uh, fitting footbed for, for your shoes. So far, they feel really comfortable. I'm glad that I went with this. This was recommended by someone that does a lot of backpacking and hiking. This is the last one for now. I, I haven't really gone over like clothes, which is like the last thing on my list. So I'll eventually get to clothes. So I'm not going to do any clothes today. This is Western Mountaineering Badger MF. It comes in this crazy laundry style looking bag. I'll just kind of hold it to the side there, I guess. And that's it. Kind of look like a, a big jalapeno. A lot of folks seem to be going with uh, brands like Big Agnes and their sleep systems, there's quilts, there's so many different options when it comes to sleeping bags. For the Western Mountaineering brand, a lot of folks are going with the Alpen Light just because of the weight of it. I went with the microfiber Badger because 
it's still reasonably light. I think it's only, it's like two or four ounces he heavier than the Alpen light, but it's a lot wider. It's a lot wider in the foot area and a lot wider in the, in the shoulder area. This thing is freaking amazing so far. I love this thing, it's so comfortable. And the hood area seems to be just big enough where I can fit my, uh, my pillow. Actually, I, I tried, I can fit two of them in there. So that's gonna work out perfectly. And this is 15 degrees. I think this one's rated 15. If it's too warm, if it, if it stays in the 40s at night, I'll just drape this over me, uh, leave it unzipped, whatever, and it, it should probably do just fine. But I wanted something so that if it does accidentally creep up and get cold on me, I'll be, I'll be good in September in Sequoias at, at 9,000 feet. And that is basically it. So that's all the gear that I have for 2023. So anyways, if you have any comments about what I've chosen, what you would have done instead, I will be doing a separate, I guess, kind of review on each piece of this gear through just like a technical observation of this gear. I can provide some insight on, on each piece as far as what I like, what I don't like as far as a design aspect. Um, before even using the gear and then as I get to the point where I'm I'm doing some hikes and I've got some stuff planned just letting you guys know how the gear is holding up what I like about it what I wish I would have done instead or if I'm totally stoked about the gear and, it, and it's working just fine so that's the direction that, that I see myself heading in with some of this stuff so if you have any comments please let me know if there's anything in particular you want to know about any of this gear that I've shown you let me know I will be doing reviews on everything so if there's anything you want to see that's specific, please let me know and I'll make sure I throw that in there. All right. Thank you guys.